today. The challenges are just enormous. We know that a fractured society will not be good for growth, will not be good for sustainable development. We need better equality, better democracy. We cannot rely on the idea that technology will solve everything. Vast parts of populations have been left behind. This is not a world that we want. We don't want it for ourselves and we don't want it for our children and grandchildren. Digital transformation creates tremendous opportunities, but it also creates challenges. We're constantly dealing with the changes that that wields for our society. Who has power, who doesn't, who has voice, and who doesn't. And civil society has an immense amount to offer to ensure that the technologies are implemented in a way consistent with broader societal goals. Technology should be in the service of human beings, in the service of values, in the service of families. Jobs will be destroyed and new types of jobs will be created, but 90% of the new jobs in the digital economy are very low remunerated and very low protected. People are losing trust in each other. How do we bring credibility back to the conversation? There's a tendency to think the market can solve these things, but the practical reality is for very low-income families, the market doesn't work very well. And so our focus now is how do we make the market work for the disenfranchised? Civil society is embedded in communities, working with some of the most vulnerable groups around the world. We are the citizens that participate in decisions and that should be aware and willing and committed to defend civil rights, human rights. There are some very, very good examples of people using technology for democratic purposes. It's not whether people are keeping up, it's whether we are thoughtful about shaping a future where people matter. Civil society plays an incredibly important role in holding governments to account. It really is a way of bringing the voice of the community and the residents that we're trying to serve into those conversations. And without them, we cannot find any solution. The most innovation happening in business, in government, and in civil society is when the three work together. You can't do development without partnership. We will never have the funds nor the capabilities to be able to do this on our own. 21st century growth cannot be built by any one sector. It is absolutely necessary that collaboration happen. In the Africa context, with all the challenges we have, it was civil society, private sector who have come to take action. A modern society does well when it really tries to capitalize on the social and ethical potential that there is in civil society. Some of the things that we have learned at the forum really help connect with potential future partners. Here you have government, private sector and civil society in the same room, having a discussion, advancing the agenda of the world. To develop opportunities, develop new models, whether you're talking about climate, or you're talking about education, or you're talking about health, or you're talking about economic development. It's also an opportunity to influence the people who can make a difference as we try to address some of the real challenges. There's going to be movement from realization to action. The World Economic Forum is a partner for all of us in civil society fighting for a better world. 